Hi folks, Brother Nero here. You know, I was just thinking, it's been a while since I made a video uh, about or including or featuring or directed towards the general vicinity of Dave Rubin. And I was worried that some of you might have like started to think, well, maybe that's because Dave Rubin's doing okay. And he isn't. And I intend to remind you of that. And I got, got to give a shout out. The, a lot of the content of this video comes courtesy of Dave Rubin Clips on Twitter. You should follow them. Because whoever's running that Twitter account, God bless you. Well, I'm going to enjoy this. Even if I'm not, I'm going to say I am. Because let me tell you something, folks. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. There he is. So um, to say I'm a liberal, it's like it doesn't really make sense anymore. Um, I well done, Dave. I first fucking point out the blocks. I agree with you. Right, you're a cunt. I would say I'm a bit on the liberal side of a new conservative movement. I like that. I also like, you know, there was. I think. Okay, okay, stop. You, you see, you were doing so well. And then you had to, you went into that second sentence. You know, you tried to have that you, know, you tried to have that other idea. You tried to have a second idea. Yeah. You know? For many years, a lot of young people, particular particularly, didn't like the phrase conservative. It sounds old and stodgy, and I think there was an association with like you know people smoking a cigar and like stuffy rooms talking about you know the Dow Jones and money and war and all sorts. What the fucking hell are you talking about? No, Dave. No, Dave. The, 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 the problem with conservatism, conservatism appealing to young people is, yeah, it is quite an old thing because it's quite serious. There's no, no, you know, conservatism sort of like isn't about fun. It's about sort of like, you know, being sensible. Well, it used to be. Now it's not anymore it's just now it's just about like what do the what do those people on the what do people on the left like what do they not like let's do the shit they not they don't like and then support the shit that, that you know, and then go against the shit they do regardless of whether it makes sense or it's consistent and let's let that be the basis for our entire political fucking movement and that's it because that's what it is now that's all it is your entire, you know, your entire fucking move, the entire conservatism has been reduced down to nothing more than what pisses off people, you know, people on the left. That's it. This stuff. And it's like, that probably had, was true at some level or, you know, like it was just sort of a cliche or a meme or something. But now... It was a meme. A meme. Conservatives were all were old, grey, miserable, fucking bitter and twisted, face like a bulldog licking piss off a stinging little wasp face cunts. No. Now, first off, when I'm around conservatives, conservatives are nicer, conservatives are happier, conservatives. Are yes, because they they've all got their buttocks clinched so tightly around you, right? So they're fucking keeping their children away from you. Agree to disagree. Conservatives are more generous. Of you always say that you, this is a phrase. I agree to disagree. It's the fucking most disingenuous. But you can agree to disagree. Uh, what does that even mean? You know, we don't have to agree to disagree. Politic, what you know, and you never say what you disagree with them on. And it, but it's almost as if like anything you disagree on, you can just say agree to disagree and then walk away all happy. Like like that's it. Like that. Like the thought that you, the thing you disagree upon. Like that thought process doesn't go anywhere beyond that conversation. It doesn't go into a ballot box. It doesn't go into a into a policy or a le bit of legislation. No. Prick. Um, and I, so, I like calling myself a conservative at this point. I really do. Um, it's. It wow! Wow! You've come out. To, to, do you, you've written a book. On, you've written two books on it. Did you know this? Right? Do you remember last year? Right when you know I may have had a bit of a meltdown when I tried to read Dave Rubin's book. As I'm sure you're aware, last week Dave Rubin 
released a book. Now, my initial reaction to this was one of sadness because I thought, just think, there's trees out there that have sacrificed their lives so that they can be turned into pages into Dave Rubin, in Dave Rubin's fucking book. Calling this a book is an insult to the art of writing and to all of the great writers throughout the history of humankind. It's pages with fucking words on it. The similarity between that and a book fucking ends there. Now, obviously, I'm going to be coming from a place where I already hated Dave Rubin, and you might be someone who's a fan of Dave Rubin. And that's fine, it's not my fault your mother fucking drank varnish when she was pregnant with you. I, re I, was, I was gobsmacked. Like, the very idea that this, these words, Dave Rubin wrote these words down on purpose, and then thought, yeah, that's, that's fine, that'll do, and then sent them off to be published and then to actually charge money, to charge people money to buy this so they could read this fucking sentence. It took less than two chapters before Dave Rubin wrote something that shocked me, offended me, and disgusted and appalled me. They say that the first step to recovery is admitting there's a problem. This is crucial because denial ain't just a river in Egypt. Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. I've read Mein Kampf. I've read Anders Brevik's manifesto. And even that cunt gave it away, got 1,500 pages knocked out, and he didn't have the gall to charge it for it. I can, ha But I can handle those manifestos. Do you know why? Because at no point did Brevik or, or Hitler claim to be comedians and they didn't feel the need to fucking try to be funny and scatter, chuck a few gags in to lighten the mood up slightly. But Dave Rubin is someone who is. This is a guy who claims to still be a comedian, who had, this is the guy who is still referred to as a comedian and he writes the words, denial ain't just a fucking river in Egypt. This joke is one of the oldest fucking jokes in the history of a, this is our, this is the only joke that I can think of that is older than this is why did the chicken cross the road and it ain't far fucking off this joke is so fucking old it, it's probably one of Dave Rubin's fucking audience members when he does his shitty fucking program on the blade this should be something that pisses off Dave Rubin fans the fact that he fucking thinks that little of you. He's gonna put a joke in it that's nearly 90 years fucking old and you're gonna fucking just take it. Denial is a river in Egypt. You should be ashamed of yourself. And the fact that you're trying to equate bad reviews, as you said on Twitter, with literal book burning. He's an author who doesn't know what the word literally means. If I ever see it, I'm not going to burn this book. If I ever fucking see you, I'm going to kick you in the fucking bollocks. At least then you'll be reminded that you've got a pair. I'm going to tear you so many fucking new arseholes, you won't find enough gays in California to fill them. This is pathetic. Right, I've tried to read it several times now, in several different forms, on a live stream, in a pre-written video, and I couldn't get past the fucking denial is a river in Egypt joke. But the point is... Dave Rubin, that, that first book, his first book, Don't Burn This Book, right? Right, whatever. We all know about that one. Did you know, like, last year, and last year I made a video, I think it was around end of August time, or middle of August, like, it was at, where he announced that he was, he'd done a second book that was due out, like, the fall, that, that was due out this year, right? And... Well, that book called Don't Burn This Country, right? And and that book came out in April. And I didn't know about this until literally like a month and a bit ago. I didn't know. Because nobody got... That's how fucking insignificant did you... How many of you knew? I didn't fucking know. So I just thought, well, if no one fucking... You know, what's the point in reviewing a book by someone who's dropped out of the level of, like, the, even even the people who regularly take the piss out of him and regularly make videos ripping him to pieces, like, didn't know it was out.
it's been an odd shift for me. And that isn't to say that I don't believe any of the things that I laid out in the first book, because I still do believe those things. Oh, do you? What things are that, Dave? Is that the stuff that doesn't make sense, the stuff that's all lies and bullshit, or the stuff that contradicts the other stuff in the first place? But those things have been abandoned by the liberals. And I can't, I can't disconnect liberals. But the things they wrote in the first book were not about lib. Your whole thing was about how the lib liberals and the left are mental. So, so, so what, what's the first book? Got, how can you sit there and say that the first book's got to do with? It can't even. Did we're only on the first fucking clip? That's not to say that every now and again there could be a once in a century storm that you got to get out of Dodge, you know, but, but well, look, in yeah. my, remember Miami, what was it, two years ago, south, Southeast Florida, they said there was this massive storm coming and it was going to destroy all of South Florida and Miami will be underwater forever and everybody flew up north and everybody went to Georgia. And that, that, that is literally horseshit. Nobody, right, they might have said there's a bad, there's a big storm coming, might want to batten down the hatches, sandbags at the door. You know, small boys, jumpers for goalposts, but nobody said that Miami was going to be underwater forever and that fucking all the other horse shit you just made up. And North, and basically nothing happened. Nothing right. happened. Actually, my... N nothing, nothing happened. Right, nothing. You sure about that, Dave? Sure you don't want to just tone, you don't, you don't want to haggle on that one. You don't want to negotiate maybe up to it wasn't as bad isn't it, it but also isn't it best sometimes to sort of in the case of like maybe a devastating storm to possibly err on the side of caution and assume the worst case scenario rather than just stick that sit there thinking well Dave Rubin says it's not gonna be a bit folks have a little place in Florida and we went there a few weeks after the hurricane place never looked better because the water had gotten everything growing and the buildings were cleaner and it was like yeah. man this this should happen a little more often that's not, not to say that every did did you just argue did you just argue in favor the benefits of a hurricane was that everything was growing and the buildings were cleaner Because of a hurricane. Oh, great. Dave Rubin and Dennis Prager. This will be objective as a motherfucker, won't it? Hey, by the way, are you worried about the hurricane? So, oh, oh, do you know what, Dennis? He's not. Do you know why? Because A, it's not going to happen. And B, even if it does, you know, it's going to give it, you know, the town could do with a bit of a fucking rinse, couldn't it? As we're recording this right now, you, you know, I'm in Miami, so it looks like it, it hit the West Coast unbelievably hard, like category. Uh, did it, Dave? Oh! Isn't that a pisser? Uh -huh. Five. Uh, uh -huh. My folks have a place over there that we're just praying isn't going to be destroyed. Uh, but, oh, God. But to That's not all they've probably been praying for bring it to a little bit of the politics and then we'll get into the book. I mean, DeSantis is doing everything possible, but the media is just waiting. Are you feeling that? Were you talking about that on your radio show this morning? That the media is just... Why weren't you listening, Dave, to your boss's fucking radio show, you fucking... Waiting for one disaster to really strike so they can say this is the thing and he's incompetent and he's evil and awful. And like, they would love for destruction, basically, is what I'm saying. He just said that the Democrats would love for a fucking hurricane, for this hurricane to destroy Florida just so they can fucking hold it against DeSantis. I think it is to DeSantis's credit that there is a, as a long shopping list of shit you can fucking throw against him before you fucking have to bring up the fact that a hurricane you know, of all the things, right, ain't his fucking fault, right? But you were just literally there saying, "Yeah, you know, oh, I went to, I went down after the hurricane. Oh, it was great. Oh, the build, oh, it's shiny. Oh, it's brilliant. Fucking wonderful." Uh, 
I want you to know that it is not easy for me to say I agree with you in this case. <laughs> Dennis Prager, girl same. I've never been more seen. I think the left's hatred of us is so great that a certain amount of joy would be in their hearts. They wouldn't express it, of course. I, I, I fucking would. I would express it in ways that fucking, you know, will get me sucking ba banned and suspended from everywhere. You know, because, you know, because unlike you lot, when I say something mean and horrible and vicious and cruel, when I sit here and, you know, spin out these, you know, angry, you know, verbally, you know, you know violent and disgusting, Disgusting and depraved, you know, fantasies about the hideous acts of fucking violence that I would love to see performed upon your person. Where, you know, when I say it, unlike you lot, I don't fucking sit there and say, oh, it's just a joke. Right? It's funny, but it's not a joke. I mean every word of it. If, if Florida were hurt. And by the way, I don't think it's symmetric. If Florida were fucking hurt. God, Florida. Because even Texas needs somewhere to laugh at. I loathe what the Democrats have done to where I still live in California. It, it would bring me no joy if some natural disaster hit California. Well, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be. I don't want it to hit California. Just you. Specifically you. I, I don't think there's symmetry in, in the uh, in the hatreds. What, what? Do you not? Do you not, Dennis? Oh. Well, that symmetry or that asymmetry, as you put, that's sort of connected to... Well done, Dave. You, you figured out what asymmetry what this is. This book is about because it's about oh, God book. and the Bible and goodness and things of that nature. And, and you know that I'm sort of you, as I sort of call you my... Oh, shut up, Dave. Did, I don't know about you folks, but... Didn't, didn't all that stuff there with Dennis Prager saying that, you know, that they they just hate us with such venom and, uh, you know, and it is not, you know, not that I would never, you know, my, you know, I would never hate them that much. Is, is it just me or doesn't that sound a lot like what they call it? Virtue signaling. He's basically saying, look, I'm better than you, you know, you know, I, you know, I, I'm a better person than you are. And and maybe you are Dave. Maybe you are a better person in this scenario. But you're next to Dave Rubin, who's. I mean, calling him sentient is a is a fucking put. It's only a technicality. I get this is the new thing that the system that the machines are going to be pushing on us. And do you get it about the control part? It's like oh. You can just sit in your room and you can go to the milk section and you can go to the electronic section and buy this buy. I'm sorry, Dave, are you broadcasting this show, this episode from 2004? Yeah, online shopping, mate. It's been a thing for like, you know, two decades, maybe more. And that, and then a drone is going to bring it to your house. And maybe the drone will, you know, fire around. They already are. They already are. Drones already are bringing shit to people's houses. Hello, are you from the past? Get at your kids. Who knows? Or maybe uh, if you've been a bad person and perhaps you voted the wrong way or didn't get vaccinated, perhaps Walmart pay is not going to work for you or you'll have to pay more for certain things. Or as crazy as it sounds, could they maybe charge you more because you're white? I mean, these things, I know it all sounds nuts, but yeah. Do you know what, Dave? That is the point where most people, even if you think that, see, it's OK to have stupid bonkers irrational thoughts that are steeped in no reality whatsoever right it's okay to have those those strains of thought but there comes a point dave where most reasonable intelligent people will sit there and go hold on this sounds fuck it you know what you know what that's all that that's complete bollocks isn't it yeah 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 i won't say that out loud because i'll look like a fucking nutter The 
this all of this awful woke bullshit hasn't come to its final conclusion yet. It hasn't done exactly what it's supposed to do yet. A lot of people think we're moving past it, and in certain places we are, but the machine, watch watch the Matrix, man. The machine finds a way of being in... Watch the fucking Matrix. Oh, you mean that thing that's an allegory, that film that's an allegory for being trans? I'll tell you what, while we're on the subject of that, yeah. it has nothing to do with anything. Oh, it's Glenn Beck! Oh, it's Glenn Beck! My God, I'm sorry, I haven't seen him in ages. Good God, look at it! Look at the state of that. He's still, still, still got his, his cardigan. He's getting chunkier every time. It yeah. has nothing to do with anything. So why is it? That is that is your show. That is all your shows, really. That is every right wing fucking you know independent media news and indeed mainstream media news show, right? From Glenn Beck, Dave Rubin to fucking Tucker Carlson, Jim, it, it's just, it, it's nothing, it's all, it's fuck all. It's fuck all to do with nothing. It is jazz, bot, jazz, bot, bugger all. Why can't I say that to protect my daughter? I'm sorry, have you got a neckerchief on, Glenn? And you're going to question, you're going to start talking about other people's fucking genders, are you? Hmm? Hmm? What next, huh? You're going to be wearing eyeliner? Hmm? What the fuck? It's not even got it on pro. It looks like he's just fucking, it, it looks like it, it's just gone wafty in the wit, like. It just looks fucking stupid. But then it's Glenn Beck, he always would look stupid. He can't not. And the only thing that could stop him from looking stupid is an act of God or a very large bag. Why do I have to uh, not protect my daughter there or protect my daughter over here? She's worked her whole life. She doesn't have a chance to win against this person. Where does it... What the fucking hell are you talking about? This all in you know, this ends with a washed up. I kid you not. This is what's going to happen. Oh, right. They're talking about trans people in sport. Right. 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 Do you know what's funny about that? The whole trans. And, and I'm going to make it clear. I don't get having a. I don't really have an opinion. I don't give a shit. I'm not because, you know, the sports I'm interested in doesn't play any fucking factor in. And in fact, it's interesting how so many people, how no, most of these fuckers on the right couldn't give two shits about most fucking women's, most sports, most women's sports, right? Until suddenly trans people were involved. Now suddenly they all give a shit, right? I'm not going to be a hypocrite like that, right? But one thing I do find interesting was there was that one case in the Olympics, weren't there? The last Olympics of a of a trans uh, power lifter, right? Of a, of a trans, uh, a transgender uh, woman power lifter who was in the in the women's power lifting category, and she came last. Right, she came last, and when she came last, all of the right wingers like this cunt and fucking Ben Shapiro and all that, they're all pointing and laughing, going, oh, "Look at that!" Oh, meanwhile. You know, not re not you know, forgetting of course that their entire argument against trans people being in sports, you know, tr you know, trans people, you know, crossing over across the into the other world of in you know, you know, the whole argument was that you know, oh God, if a transgender woman, or as they call them, you know confusingly sexy man right as they as they like would as they prefer to think of it you know, they the idea was oh they're gonna muller them because women are shit at sport women couldn't beat men at anything they're fucking rubbish you know men just have to fucking turn up we get fucking you know within two years there is going to be a washed up six foot seven NBA player who was a marginal two point a game scorer who mm -hmm. barely got off the bench, who is going to say, I am a woman. And you know what's going to happen? He's going to play in the WA, WNBA and he's going to score 45 points a game in 20 minutes, crush all the women. And then the modern feminists will applaud as women are being dunked on. This is like, it, it, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I love this fantasy world. 
these fuckers live in that they think they think in order to be like in order to be like transgender in an official capacity in this in this regard or in most other regards you just have to say i'm trans now like there's nothing else there's nothing else you have to do there's no other fucking you know there's no there's no other sort of like you know it's not like it's not like there's several years of shit you have to go through Can you imagine, can you imagine how little dignity, I mean, uh, washed up NBA, I don't like, I mean, uh, you know, d women, w WNBA basketball player, what do they earn a year? Fucking 30 grand? You might as well go open a fucking, you might as well get a fucking subway. You might as well be a manager of a fucking, uh, you know, of, of, a, of a Target store. You'll probably earn more, you'll probably earn more doing that. Fucking... And he's going to score 45 points because, you know, as we... Because, again, you know, a washed-up male basketball player could thrash all of the fucking women. Because they only, you know... Because women are shitter at everything sport-wise than men. That is a fact. A washed-up NBA player. What the fuck is this? Well, you said it two years, folks. Set your timers. What is it? 5th of October. It's October 22. We'll be back here in 2024. At which point, Dave will be... I mean, he won't be... You know, Dave could have fully gone, you know, deconverted from homosexuality. And uh, probably... He'll probably be the, the last member of the Westboro Baptist Church by then. So first off, I want to just say something. Sam and I were friends for many years. I'm not really sure if we're friends anymore to be quite honest with you and it, it doesn't really matter and i'm not going to attack him personally here i'm just it, do, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. i'm just dedicating an entire segment of my show to talking about him you know friends but dave you you were not friends no nobody is friends with you nobody likes you dave right people are people you know the majority of people just either use you for your you know your tufa token status being you know, be you know, you know. I would say a three. You know, you're Jewish and gay, but I would say a three, a third thing. But it's impossible for me to say that without being accused of being ableist, which is unfortunately a problem with a lot of your content. Is that you know, the only way I can adequately sum up how incredibly lacking of any intelligence would require me to start using words that I I don't want to. I don't really feel like using anymore, and um, at least not you know in public so simply i might sc i might scream them in a cupboard very loudly to myself right in a vacuum but like not going to do that um about six or eight months ago um i had sent out a tweet saying to a bunch of my liberal friends and i was talking about sam harris and, and barry weiss and jonathan Hyde. people who have been on the show barry weiss barry v God almighty, Dave. Barry Weiss, really? Yo, I said, hey, you know, maybe now you guys are realizing that you were a little bit off on Trump. I'd love to continue that conversation. Uh, and Sam just unfollowed me on Twitter. So that's, I, I don't. <laughs> oh, I love it. Look, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, it takes a very special breed of, of, of arsehole of tosser of wanker of prick for me to you know find find myself sort of like empathizing with sam harris but here we are well done dave i mean to make this about me sam and his wife have been to my house you truly are building bridges between you know people who you know were ideological opponents for dinner our house to dinner for many many times uh we've i've done events with him Oh, can you imagine anything worth fucking hell? What, where would you love? What's the last fucking place you would want to go be invited? In? Imagine waking up like fucking Ray Liotta in the in the sequel to Silence of the Lambs, right? When he's fucking sat there, he said Dave's Ray Liotta with his you know brain fucking hanging out, you know. Oh God Almighty, you know. All sorts of stuff. I always, always, always 
go out of my way to not let politics affect friendship. Um, a lot of Really? Well, that's convenient, Dave, because, like I said, nobody likes you anyway. You could believe anything. You could be a conservative, a liberal, a flat earther, a Scientologist. You could be a Raelian, a Breatharian. You could be a, you could be an Aryan Breatharian. You could be a Bavarian librarian who's a Breatharian and who's Aryan. You know. You could be all. It could be anything you want. You could be a banana in in pajamas. You could anything. Nobody likes you. Even your even your husband hates you. He must do. You know, I'm sure your husband appreciates the money that you bring in. But I can't believe he possibly has any respect for you. You know, when he sees what you have to do to yourself. The you know, how you have to fucking you know, humiliate and and, and embarrass yourself and sit there and let people and, and, and sit there and fucking have to, you know, pretend that the the people you surround yourself with, who pay you, you who employ you, you know, who sit in chat rooms. Do you remember when Tommy Sodomayor was on Dave Rubin's show? Tommy Sodomayor and, and a couple of weeks later, Tommy Sodomayor was in, uh, was doing a live stream and... Tommy Sodomayor, you're read in his chat, someone said that Dave Rubin was gay, and Tommy Sodomayor lost his fucking mind. He freaked out because he didn't know Dave Rubin was gay, he, like proper went, met. you'd have thought he'd just been shown a card trick. He was like, he was like, Dave Rubin is gay! I shook that motherfucker's hand! Yeah, yeah, that's exactly how he said it, that's how they all talk. You know, that's, that's the side you're on, Dave. That's what you do. That's what you've had to do. And you have to sit there and pretend that it's just, oh, agree to disagree. Right? No, none of them like you, Dave. Other people have trouble with that. I'm Dick and Sam, if you're watching this video, I've enjoyed the many times that you and your wife have come to our house for dinner. Um, I'm not the one. These are sex people, Lynn. I'm at that unfollowed you on Twitter. Well, I did after you unfollowed me. So I don't mean... Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to let ideological differences get in the way of our friendship. But you unfollowed me on Twitter, so I'm unfollowing you. And now I'm doing a bit about it on my show. I wonder if Sam Harris... To I bet he didn't. I bet Sam Harris did not fucking talk about this. He might have briefly skinned over, but he does not take it in any way as personally as you because sam harris still for better or worse still has you know actual credibility you know i think sam harris for all his faults you know probably you know it's probably fair to say he does actually believe and you know he's, he's sincere you know in in the things he says and does you know whereas and you know and even he's got his limits you know clearly Right. You haven't. You'll say anything. Make this like a personal bickering nonsense. And you guys know the story when it comes to me, right? I decided to start really seeing where the truth was, seeing what was honest about public policy that I had been... And would you know, would you, would you, wouldn't you believe it? The truth happens to be underneath this massive check written by the Koch brothers, right? And underneath it was this fucking was this fucking list of shit that they'd written down saying, this is what you believe now. wrong about some things and a bunch more uh and then shortly uh right after that i did that why i left the left video something that perhaps sam should take a look at then you have i love how dave's solution to every problem or disagreement is is listening to him more like it's not you know it's it's watching more of his videos it's watching more of his content or reading his book on that one. Uh, Ellen says, how do we convince our woke gay son that we are not the faces of evil? Ugh. I love that. That's a great reaction. Ugh. Ugh. 
Oh, very simple. Ugh. You know, I like the very... Why, why does your woke gay son think that you're the faces of evil? You know, Ellen. Could you clarify that? Because I'm sure it's not a conclusion he's just jumped to. You know. How old is your son? When did he come out? Did he come out? What did you, how did you react? How do you continue to react? Yeah. But let's see what Dave advice Dave has got based on this incredibly fucking scant piece of information. Ugh, ugh, it, it, it's not easy. I don't have to tell you that, Alan. It's, it's not easy. Um, look, yeah. you know, unfortunately, the gays in some way as a community, and I don't like community, and I think LGBT, none of that makes any sense. I right, none of that makes any... I don't like this thing that I'm going to... Ref I'm going to talk about this thing that I don't actually like, and I'm going to refer to this group, which, you know, doesn't make any sense. So, you know, and I don't think he's real, right? But, right, it, you know, I'm going to refer to it because it is... And it does. Um, and there's no other way to put it. And I'm just being stubborn. I have nothing to do uh, or no more in common with a trans person than a, than a straight person does, right? It's a completely different thing. Um, but for young people especially, they've combined somehow gay, which once was irreverent and cool and outside of the box. And that's why so much music and art and culture came out of the gay scene and it had its problems. Yes, as opposed to nowadays, when gays are just doing nothing. When gays ain't producing, there's no, there's no music or, you know, or art or, you know, or, you know, or any po popular media or literature or, it's not, that none, no one's gay anymore. Right? Show busy. Nobody's gay. At all. Right? They don't produce... They, 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 they don't produce anything. They, they're just fucking, you know, phoning it in. Right? Can't be arsed anymore. Problems too. Right? You take a whole bunch of people... And what, what have you fucking produced, mate? Other than two, two books. In fact, let me read you. I mentioned Dave Rubin's book. Let me read you this review that someone wrote of his... Uh, let me, let me read you this review that someone someone wrote of his uh, uh, his fucking book, right? This was uh, this is on a, a website called Aeromagazine uh, dot com. Um, I don't know who this person uh, the person who wrote this. Who uh, their name is Matt Matt McManus. Dave Rubin's "Don't Burn This Country: Surviving and Thriving in Our Woke Dystopia" is the follow up to his earlier "Don't Burn This Book." It is a work so dull it that it almost achieves the paradoxical aesthetic of profound superficiality. Presenting itself as a book on virtually everything, it winds up saying nothing of interest. Its approach to ideological contradictions, as long as they are right-wing contradictions, isn't to take sides or attempt to overcome them, but to affirm that both sides of the contradiction are true and cheerfully move on agree to disagree right? in this he I, he ironically confirms the intuition the intuitions of the great conservative philosopher roger scruton when he praises the natural instinct in unthinking people who tolerant of the burdens that life lays on them and unwilling to lodge blame where they seek no remedy seek fulfillment in the world as it is to accept and endorse through their actions the institutions and practices into which they are born as the ideal civic mindset for his politics and the and the sad thing is that dave is far too stupid to know what any of that fucking means well you don't let them get in lasting relationships then you're gonna have a whole bunch of drugs and you're gonna have a bunch of stds and all, all of that oh of course that because straight people never have stds or drugs do they you wouldn't have fucking st christ almighty fuck it you know an STD would be embarrassed to say it was fucking caught by you. Your husband probably hasn't even fucking sneezed on you. Stuff. Then you get equality and it's like, time to move on, guys. Like that. I thought that's what we were fighting for. Um, so I don't know exactly what you do. I guess maybe you could try to show them this show or something else about me. That's it. And that's it. That's, that's it. A, a mother who's clearly a fan of the show, right, writes a letter because she, for some bizarre reason thinks that Dave might be able to offer some advice and help her. But, and she didn't ask much. 
And what does he do? I, he rambles on about the same old shit that he always talks about. He's n he's never ch he hasn't changed at all. Right? He's the same fuck. You know, it, it, basically he's stagnating now. He's reaching this crossroads where Dave Rubens he's either going to have to go. He's either going to have to start going a little bit further to the right, or he's going to have to actually. Grow a fucking spine and start acting, you know, acting like you got a set, Dave. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm Brother Neuro, also known as Dick Coughlin. Please uh, like this video, comment, subscribe, share it around and support me on Patreon. Uh, that would be lovely. Other than that, take care. Good night. May God be less. And remember, where there's no sense, there'll be a Dave Rubin book. <laughs>